This is a martial arts YouTube celebrity, and this is a functional Aikido guy, aka me. And while I was skeptical about pulling off any Aikido moves on a pro fighter, both of us were surprised by the end of the sparring. But the story starts when I closed my Aikido dojo, sparred the pro MMA fighter again who kicked my ass two years ago, and did well. I felt like my martial arts journey is complete. On top of that, I was burnt out from training. I mean, I've been doing martial arts for over 15 years, and not even once during those years I took a break. Out of those 15 years, for three years I was a living student, for seven years I was running a professional dojo, which had a huge toll on me. And on top of it all, for the past year, I've been training like a professional MMA fighter, even though I was a complete amateur. I was burnt out, and not only did I feel that I need a break from martial arts, I didn't feel inspired to train whatsoever, let alone to try to make my Aikido work. As a result, I wasn't training martial arts for almost a year entirely, and I wasn't even sure if I'm coming back anytime soon. But then I met Sergei Maslaboya, a multiple times kickboxing world champion, and recently a Glory K1 champion. Sergei was looking for someone to coach him on YouTube, and in order to express his gratitude, he helped me film some content for me too. I always wanted to try to spar a world champion, and so I asked if we could do it on record with Sergei, which we did, and for the whole three rounds I felt like a mouse being played with by a cat. And this experience slightly rekindled my flame for martial arts, as I started wondering what would it take for me to reach a level where I would at least pose a challenge to Sergei. He then invited me to join his private group which he was teaching personally. Initially I was hesitant, I didn't really know if I wanted to get back to regular training, but then I decided to give it a shot for a month. And then a month later, I was training 3 times per week. And then a couple of months later, I was training 4 times per week. And soon enough, I was crazy about martial arts again, training 5-6 to six times per week. Now a lot has happened over those two years. I continued to train kickboxing intensively, I had a second MMA fight, I started doing pure boxing, and I even made some small attempts at trying to make my Aikido work again. Nevertheless, I was still not taking my Aikido quest seriously. I would casually try it out here and there, but I didn't think much of it, as I thought that trying to make Aikido functional is a useless endeavor. But that is until I met Jeff Chan. Now Jeff is a high level professional MMA fighter. On top of that, he runs a successful YouTube channel called MMA Shredded, where he gives out tons of really good advice for MMA and fighting. Now it happened so that recently I organized the Ultimate Cell Defense Championship, a reality series where I brought in 6 martial arts YouTubers together, including myself, and we competed in various cell defense challenges to see who does best. For example, such as fighting in a moving bus, escaping a warehouse full of knife attackers, and more. And Jeff Chan was one of the contenders that I invited, and we competed against each other. Now despite the fact that the Ultimate Cell Defense Championship was super intense, for 5 days in a row we were competing against each other in very self defense challenges again and again. But then also all of us are YouTubers, so we couldn't miss a chance of making collabs together. As a result, at the very end of the day, when we were all spent and exhausted, at around 11 p.m. or midnight, we would gather up in one of the gym areas and we would start filming videos together. Now a lot of those videos were sparring videos. And personally, I didn't even think that it's worth sparring Jeff for me, because he's so high level, and essentially I'm still very much an amateur. My plan initially was to ask Jeff for advice how to make Aikido more functional. Since during my journey, I realized that people who are already really good at fighting, they generally have a capacity to look at a technique which doesn't really work and to modify it in a way where it becomes effective in bare minutes. But then Jeff was really adamant that we should spar and that I should try to apply Aikido on him. Eventually he convinced me to do it, but I had a lot of doubts. And I even made it clear and put it on record at the very beginning before our sparring. I have to give a heads up, I don't think Aikido works great, but I try to modify it. I learn a few techniques which I apply once in a while. I'll do my best to apply them, but I can't guarantee anything. He's a lifelong martial artist, uh, <laughs> learning. Jeff is a really nice guy, by the way. Even though I was significantly bigger, Jeff's skills are way superior. So I was doubtful if I would be able to pull off even a single Aikido technique. Nevertheless, I decided to give my best, and the sparring began. Okay, we set are it here. up with your superior striking first. Right, yeah. Now do take note, Jeff is not going hard in this sparring. Well, I guess I'm not going hard either though. One way or another, with Jeff not fighting for his life, pulling off Aikido moves on him was way more possible. At the same time, my original Aikido vs MMA sparring partner, the professional MMA fighter, he was not fighting for his life either, and he was even giving me chances to try to pull off my Aikido techniques. and I still wasn't able to do it on him. So there were no guarantees of success with Jeff Chan either. So there I was, doubtful if I will be able to pull off in a single technique, but I learned over the years that one of the best ways to pull off Aikido techniques is by going into a clinch. So I clinch up and then... 
BAM! I perform a modified Aikido technique known as Dikyo, a technique that uses pressure on the elbow and shoulder to bring the person down to the ground. Now Jeff eventually rolls out of it, showing that my technique was still only half effective. But then suddenly I'm starting to think, okay, if I pulled off one technique, maybe I'll be able to pull off more. So I had to try. I continued to try to get into the clinch again and again in order to maximize my potential of pulling off Aikido techniques. And I wasn't successful every time. But once I was... I almost pulled off a modified Kaitanage technique. But then Jeff defended it and the show kept going on. I then went for a clinch again and again. And then I pulled off another Aikido technique known as Koregeshi. Woo! Okay! You're good. You're back. You're good. You're so cool! Don't talk anymore. Go, go, go. The same one I pulled off years ago in a BJJ competition. Since eventually Jeff still rolled out of it, it became clear I still need to improve my ability to control the opponent after I take them down with an Aikido technique. But the sparring was already looking much better than I initially expected. And then things kept getting better and better. Soon enough, I pulled off a Sankyo, a wrist lock access by going down under the elbow and putting pressure on the shoulder through the wrist. I went for another modified Kaitanage. And then did another Koregeshi. And another Ikkyo. And all of this success made me think that maybe trying to make some Aikido techniques functional isn't a lost cause after all. I clearly still needed to put a lot of work into them, but the potential was there. And the techniques that I worked on for more than a decade and that initially weren't successful in a fight suddenly became possibly effective. Then right after the sparring, Jeff gave me some tips on how to make my striking guard better, mainly by using a long guard, a striking position of the arms usually used in Muay Thai, which interesting enough also reminded me of the traditional Aikido stance making me even more interested to explore this position. But then finally, my revelation that my Aikido quest should continue received another push, as I was about to spar a karate black belt, Sensei Seth. <laughs> 